Hey friends, welcome to One Little Coder. In this applied NLP tutorial, we're going to talk about a new model called Bloom's MTO. Bloom's MTO, uh, it's a family of models capable of following human instructions in dozens of languages in zero shot setting. We fine tune Bloom and MT5 pre trained multi language models on our Clos Lingual Task Mixture XP3 and find the resulting models capable of cross lingual generalization to unseen tasks and languages. If you have not heard about instruct fine tuning, this is a really good time to read about instruct fine tuning because what is happening here is almost as similar as what instruct fine tuning models have been doing. Instruct GPT is in fact a very popular model than the first GPT-3 when it came first time. Instruct GPT-3 can be used for a lot of tasks by giving instruction to the large language model and getting it done. In the same way, the Blooms and MT0 models or MTO, however you want to call it, are the Instruct GPT of the open source world. So which means not just large language model is used only for pure text generation, but you can use these models for a lot more other tasks. For example, you can use it for multi-language text generation. You can give instructions in other languages. Then you can say, you know what, find some certain words or search words related to this particular language, uh, keywords that I have given. Or you can ask it to create a story, write a story about a particular concept and give the prompt in English, but just tell it that I want the result in another language like Spanish or something else. And then finally, you can also ask it to explain some concept in another language. Overall, as you can see, this model can ha handle multilingual requests, which means you can either give prompt in English or the prompt in other languages. And you can also expect the result in other languages. For example, if you see this thing, we have said, write a fable, blah, 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 blah. And then we have said in Hindi, and then you saw that. Now I'm going to change it to Tamar, and then you can see that it has actually created a new story based on Tamar, like in the language Tamar. It says, Oru kautil varum siru poonegal oru nal. It talks about certain cats, and they are living one day, and there is a big tortoise. And then you can see how the story gets built up when we run it again and again. I think that is the biggest strength of Bloom's and MT0 model. The biggest strength of Bloom's and MT0 model here at this point is taking the instruction from human being in a multilingual setup and then it can perform really well. The question now is, how does it really compare to the Instruct GPT-3, which I already said is a really popular model. So if you see Instruct GPT, there are not a lot of data set that is available for you to compare Apple to Apple. But again, there is one particular data set some Hugging Face community member had identified on RTE. RTE is a data set task. I think it's a task. On RTE, Bloom's scores better than, I think Bloom's score is somewhere around 80 and um, um, Instruct GPT is somewhere around 70. And the argument that is being made here is that on a particular task where both the models have been evaluated, we could see Bloom's family of models doing really, really good, or at least like better than the closed, unavailable um, as open source model Instruct GPT, which still a lot of people love. There is no judgment of the capability of the model, but it is not available as an open source model for anybody to play with. So if you purely see based on this particular task, Bloom's and the family of Bloom's model is really doing good. And that can in, that can probably tell us something. It can it is indicating that, you know, this is this is an important thing that we have been missing all along. So it is the right time for us to start coding this model. So as you know, we have got a Google Colab notebook and this will be linked in the YouTube description. If you create a new notebook, make sure that you have got GPU. And uh, if you even do not have GPU, the, they have given code for CPU, GPU and GPU in 8-bit that uses some optimization um, technique to run a large model using bits and bytes on a smaller machine or a machine with a smaller memory than what it would ideally take. So you can see those options as well. 
So once you create a new Google Colab notebook, the first thing that you need to do is do NVIDIA SMI to check whether the Google Colab notebook that you have got is GPU. The next step is for you to install the required libraries. Transformers accelerate bits and byte. Transformers to download the model, download the tokenizer, create the text generation. Accelerate is quite helpful in fine tuning. Bits and bytes, like I said, to load the model in 8-bit is helpful if you want to load large model with lesser memory. The next thing is you can always go find the code from the Hugging Face Model Hub on how to use a particular model. It is quite simple. A lot of people who upload the model have that good intention of letting you know how to use it. So it is a from transformers import auto model for causal LM and auto tokenizer. Now is the time where you have to specify the model that you want to use. Now if we go and see, we have got a lot of models in three different categories. The first category is when you give prompt in English. And the second category is when you give prompt in non-English. And then the third category, they said it's only for research purposes and it is going to produce inferior result than anything above. So we can now stick to only the two section, which is one, the prompt should be given in English. Second, the prompt is given in non-English, like languages like Tamil, Telugu, Hindi, um, Chinese, Mandarin, any other languages. So now if you see the models that are available to give prompt in English, you can see models from 300 million parameters until up to 176 billion parameter. That is exactly what Bloom was, 176 billion parameter. So it is important for you to pick the right model based on the available compute that you have got. Like for example, because I'm running it on Google Colab, I've picked the 3 billion model. But if you want to give the prompts in non-English or if you wanted to work fine for non-English, multilingual, then probably you need to skip the entire first row, go to the second row and pick models like MT0, XXL, MT or Bloom 7 billion 1 MT. So it depends primarily on the use case that you have got, the memory that you have got and pick the right model. Once you pick the right model, copy the model name and it's quite easy. All you have to do is click the model link, go inside the model page and then copy it. Once you copy it, go back to your Google Colab notebook, paste the model link in the checkpoint. So the model link is stored in an object called checkpoint and now it is time for us to download the tokenizer and the model. Use auto tokenizer dot from underscore pre-trained to load the tokenizer, then auto model for causal LM dot from pre-trained to load the model once again. If you want the model to be loaded with 8-bit precision, then you can say load in 8-bit is equal to true, which will take lesser memory from your Google Colab notebook. So that way you can also load a larger model which you wouldn't have otherwise loaded. Now after we have successfully downloaded the model, now is the time for us to play with some magic. And the magic that I mean here is the prompt. The prompt is a very, very important component of large language models. A lot of people consider it to be one of the easiest things. I think this is the same story with machine learning models. Um, building a model is quite easy, but everything before and after is very difficult, especially data pre-processing. So give the right prompt, learn all the prompt engineering techniques. Next, you can encode the prompt, move it to CUDA, which is GPU, then specify that you want to generate the output. The generated output could be like 100, 100 uh, more than what the input is. And then finally decode the output and then you have the result. For example, the input that we had given is, we said um, translate, we, like we give a very simple task of translation and that translation is getting translated into a Tamil sentence and it is pretty decent. And to quickly summarize what we have so far done is, install the library, um, make sure that you've got GPU, load the library, select the model, download the model and tokenizer, select the prompt, encode the input, generate the output, decode the output and display it to the display it to the user. 
and and you can see that it is doing a pretty good job and uh, this is quite important because even though we have not selected the best model the performance of this model is really good one another important thing that i would like to highlight is it's a large language model prompts play a lot of important role so as you can see even if we remove a simple dot it is going to assume that you are going to go ahead with the same text it's not going to assume it is a translation task because it didn't know that the text has been finished so it is very important for you to see these nuances what happens when you have got dot what happens when you do not have dot so for example in this case for translate to english to tamil i love my mommy that means ennodi amma vena nesikir so it it does a decent job of translating it and then you can try with something else like for example we can say translate english to tamil i love making video tutorials non video kalai uruvakavudil migavum virumbigiren there is a there is a little bit of mistake in there um not as quite good as the native speaker um, which in case i am a tamil speaker but you can you can understand that the model is doing a pretty good job and the, even though the model is not a translation model let's try to give a prompt about a task where it has to generate five different seo keywords for google adwords related to machine learning and you can see machine learning data science artificial intelligence machine learning artificial intelligence it repeats certain things but still it takes the instruction it tries to do the job remember that we have not got the best ever model in place we have got a model and that model works fine and let us give another task where we can say you know what you need to create a story um we can say create a story of a boy becoming successful with this youtube channel so we're just asking it to create a story and then you can see that it actually creates a story and says uh the boy is a musician maybe you know a lot of music musician youtubers are becoming famous so it just says boy is a musician um even when when you increase the length as well nothing changes so maybe it's a good idea for you to play with the prompt change the prompt and then see if that is going to make any impact so prompt engineering is pretty much at this point a lot of trial and error but what you learn from the trial and error is going to make your output much better as you can see we tweak the prompt a little bit now we have he is a young boy and you know you have got the story in place that we can use to build more like you can feed this output generator inside the prompt again and that can also help us in creating a better coherent test in the future let's see how a summarization task might look like summarization is an important nlp task and let's see if we can use this model for summarization going to the internet copying and pasting um an article content and then we can just specify the task as create a short summary of the following and then give the image as a gift the text the longer text and then try to create the output just for simplicity for understanding let's specifically say where our summarization starts and it's also a very nice nuanced way of telling the machine that that is what i am expecting of you and then you have got the summary and summary says the rosetta 2 is a translation engine that translates x86 the intel code to the arm code and i think even if it is not the perfect summarization it actually does the job of shortening the large paragraph into something smaller and again remember that we're not using the best model that is available so overall if you see this is a very interesting direction for the blooms or big science team and they have got a tons of models it has become at this point like like a knife on launch you have like three or four iphones i think it is very important for you to understand which one do you want to pick which one do you want to use what do you want to do with that and that is the entire point of this video where i wanted to tell you that there is something like blooms exist which is not often discussed a lot i don't know why these large language models or the fine tuned one like this one does not get enough attention like a lot of other stuff but nevertheless this is quite interesting and i hope this video was helpful to you in learning how to use blooms and just to know that blooms exist and then you can use blooms in a multilingual setup 